Well, we're back for another retro review, A Different World, Season 2, Episode 3. Let's get it. Ain't it obvious? I just got the check for deposit it. 750 for the sound wave to get it processed. Won't stop to that shit. Weighing down my pockets. My main things to my main things. She a blossom. When she ease the pain with the brain, she a doctor. She open up, then a thing thicker than the plot gets. Swear that shit is awesome. Sight for the optics. Young nigga on top. Nike's all I'm rocking. So that all they see is checks from where the head to where the socks fit. No logo on the bifocal. Flicking old road strips. Won't even show my face until all the shows book. Need the cash in advance. Leave them all social. I'm the guy they chose him. Rise up like the Rosen. Put them on a poster. All the way up in the sky where the stars posted Sip it on that rose, I put it down on coasters Stack francs from the waves till I own the ocean More praises for the sayings, let it all soak in They like, hey, that shit is flame, bitch, I know I roll They going tight, dumb Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel This is Evie with Evie Retro Reviews Yay! Okay <laughs> I'm trying to be more animated Animated Um, listen so, this is going to be my review for A Different World, Season 2, Episode 3, Some Enchanted Afternoon. So, we start with Jaleesa and Walter arguing um, about curfew and whose responsibility is it for them to be on time. Um, I say... That, of course, it is that person's responsibility. You know you got a curfew just as well as he know he got a curfew. And she's like, she's telling him to stop allowing the boys leniency. And he was like, what you want us to just leave the little girls be like in the middle of the quad and be like, oh, I got a curfew. I got to go. And then they got to walk across the quad at night by themselves. That's not a gentlemanly thing to do. And they was like, well, if they know they get leeway with you, then they just be out doing whatever. And then the girls get in trouble and then the boy doesn't. So how is that fair? And so they're arguing and arguing. And um, Letty is like, if y'all, oh, y'all, y'all still, you're still arguing. And in the midst of this argument, quite a little bit toward the end, we see Walter start to look at Jaleesa a, a little differently. I, just, mm. I, call, I call this episode the beginning of the ode to Jaleesa and Walter. But, you know, this is the beginning of the lesson. So, um... Freddie comes around the corner and she has this huge package from Jaleesa's boyfriend, Eric. And um, it's a huge teddy bear with a scarf wrapped around it. And Walter makes a couple of jokes and Freddie is like, you should have seen the bunny with the bracelet on it. <laughs> um, and so Jaleesa goes to take the bear in the house, in the, in the dorm. And so Walter try, kind of try to pry with Freddie to try, try to figure out who is this Eric character? What's going on? Is he? Is it serious? Is this really a thing? Like, what's up? Of course, Freddie doesn't give up much. She's so gushing over the fact that Jaleesa has a boyfriend who's long distance and he spoils her and stuff. So she gives him a good report guard, much to Walter's chagrin. So um, we then go to the pit where Ron is advertising his new service where he'll come for a certain amount of money, he'll come and work, break you up in the morning for so you're not late for class. Um, so he's walking around with a pillow. Okay, Ron's wake up service. Hell, I can use the service at this point because I'm sleepy. Um, and so him and Dwayne are going into this project together. And so Dwayne tried to give him some ideas like, well, this is what we can do, blah, 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 blah. So, um, we come back to, from commercial, I guess it was a commercial break. Mine doesn't have any commercials, so it went straight into this. So, we go back to Ron, and he's telling Dwayne that he's got an advertisement on the radio at certain different times so they can get more business. And Whitley signs up for the service, and she's like, I need you to help waking up Kim in the morning. She sleeps like the dead and I'll give you, and she was like, oh, you have a money back guarantee? And he was like, yeah. And Ron was like, what? And she was, and Dwayne was like, yes, yes, we do. Nigga, yes. And she was like, good. Here's an extra $10 if you don't wake me up trying to wake her up. And they're like, bet. So, um, we then go, Walter comes in to see Jaleesa. Um, and he's, sees Letty um and he tries to find some information about like is Eric writing her letters is he putting cologne on the letters he, like he's really trying to get the 411 on his competition because he's trying to get Jaleesa to be his boot 
So, um, Letty encourages him. Um, and Walter goes in and he asks Jaleesa out. And she says no. Mm -mm. Um, <laughs> then Walter walks off. He takes it in stride. He walks off. Uh, we then go to the pit. And we'll, Jaleesa and Whitley are talking. And, Jale and Whitley is so dramatic. <sighs> She's so dramatic. She's like, oh, torn between two lovers. One is far off in the wilds of New Jersey. The wilds of New Jersey? Okay, baby, it's a couple hours ride. This is not the wilds. Of, it's not like he's off in Alaska somewhere. He's just a couple of states. Calm down. Calm, calm down. <laughs> and so Walter comes back in and he talks to Jaleesa. And he was like, you know what? We can, we can, like, we don't have to go out like boyfriend, girlfriend type of go out. We can go out as friends, you know, have a good time. Blah, 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 blah. And he, he was, she was like, well, she was like, really? So if my boyfriend, Eric, was here, he would be allowed to go on this date. He was like, yeah, I might even bring me a date. And she was like, okay, okay. And she was like, fine. He's like, I do have to eat. We can go out, you know, just um, pick me pick me up at seven and we'll, and we'll go out tomorrow. And Friday at seven. And he was like, oh no, we can't go out at seven because that's what time people who date go out. He's like, we need to go out at five. Well, it's, that's what time friends go out. Still light outside. And she was like, well, I have a four o'clock class. Can we make it 6.30? And he was like, okay, cool. A friendly 6.30. <laughs> I was like, okay. I love Sinbad. In this role is Walter. Like, yes. Everything about him was yes. Hilarious. Um, and then it's time for Dwayne and Ron to sneak. They sneak into the room to wake Kimberly up because she has swim practice. So they go to wake her up. She sits up. And as they're about to walk out, she falls back to sleep. She falls back down. Okay. So there's like, okay, plan B. And they try and get her and stand her up. And they're like, swim practice, swim practice. And they put the book bag on her shoulder. She's still in her pajamas. She puts it, and they try, and she starts walking. She takes a left turn and sits down in a chair and falls back asleep. That child wasn't really never awoke. And he's like, okay, plan C. And they tap her on the face, talk about Kimberly, Kimberly. And in the midst of them doing that, her alarm goes off. Like it sounds like, like a fire alarm. Like it is a horrible alarm. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's terrible. So it's going off. Like this is so funny. I cackled like a fool at this. Like. <laughs> Like they got caught in a bank stick up. So Ron, you know you got a fight or flight response. So <laughs> Ron is standing up against the wall, frozen. And Dwayne is like, oh, he doesn't know which way. <laughs> I don't care how many times I see this. This shit is funny as hell. He he doesn't know what to do. And then Whitney gets up out of her bed. They try to figure out how to, they get to gather themselves enough to try and get over to the alarm. It's like, it's not plugged in. I don't know how to turn it off. Whitney gets out of her bed, doesn't take her sleep mask off, goes to turn the alarm off. They freeze. Like, like so she wouldn't know that they were there because she never took her mask off her face to see what was going on. She just quietly walks over and turns the alarm off. And then right as she's walking past, she turned around and put her hand out for her money because the whole point was you not to wake her up. Man, Jesus. That would listen. Listen. That thing take me every time. We <laughs> you don't know which way to go, God. Okay. So we then get to the big friendly date. Oh God, oh God. So um, they are talking, they're having a good time, they're reminiscing, Walter's telling funny stories, but he's putting on the charm and stuff. So, you know, Walter asked a couple questions about Eric and he was like, and he was like, he can't wait to find, he was like, they said something about dating you, somebody like you would be amazing. He's like, not you, but somebody like you. He's like, I can't wait to deal with someone, you know, on that level. And she was like, well, what about Brenda? 
And he was like, he's like, Brenda who? She's like the one you took to the office party. He was like, oh yeah, she's nice. And she's like, and I know Renee came, is the school nurse. She just can't wait for you to get sick. He was like, oh, well, I might sleep with my feet in the icebox this evening. <laughs> I was like, cute. So uh, this waiter comes by with this lobster Diablo, which you have to order a day in advance. And so... Um, Walter's thinking quick on his feet. He says, he goes to the waiter, let me holler at you before you deliver. He's, first he says to the waiter, hey, sir, are you about to deliver our food to a different table? And he was like, no, sir, no, signore. This is uh, Lobster Diablo. You have to order a day in advance. He's like, okay, so let me holler at you in the corner. He's like, so how much is going to take you to convince you that we ordered this yesterday? And he's like, what, about $25? And the waiter said, Signore, here's your Dr. Diablo. And so he bribed him to get the people food. And she was like, so you mean to tell me that you ordered Lobster Diablo a day in advance? And he was like, yeah, sure. And she was like, well, why are these people about to go upside in Rico's head? Because he done gave away their food. Boy, I tell you what. And so they are talking and having a good time. And they get up and they dance to me and Mrs. Jones. We got a thing going on. Wonderful. You see her, she exhales. Those of y'all who know what that means, you know what it means. She dances with Walter and she exhales. Um, and so then we she we go to the pit where Dwayne and Ron are counting up their profits from their successful weekend. And so far, they've made 200 and some dollars successfully in this business venture. And it's like, okay, we made 200 and some dollars. And only $2,000 more to go to get these motorcycles, helmets, and matching jackets. And then one of their friends come by and say, oh, I can't wait to see you at the Kappa house or somebody's house. I want to say it was a Kappa house. They're having a party. He's like, it's about to go down. And... They are both exhausted because, you know, in order to get up that early, to get up early enough to wake up other people and then still continue to do your classes during the day, it's taking a toll on them after a week. And so they're like, listen, I'm just too tired. I can't do this. He's like, and him and Dwayne come to the conclusion. He's like, you know, we have enough money to afford two jackets and one hat and one helmet. We can lie about these damn motorcycles. And they was like, sounds like a plan to me. Business over. Boom. <laughs> Which I thought is listen. You just have to, you, when you get that tired, you just be like, "Fuck, y'all, fuck this shit. Fuck, 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 fuck all of this. Fuck all of this." Um, Jaleesa comes back from her date and tells Freddie she had a great time with Walter. And immediately, Freddie is so wish wishy. Immediately, she was like, "Oh, poor Eric. I'm gonna miss him." Wait a minute. We went on one day high and broke up with the boy already. And she was like, "We went on one friendly date. I did not say that I'm now dating Walter and I'm le and Eric and I are no more. That's not what's happened." And Freddie was like, mm -hmm. "Okay." Okay, girl. And so Jaleesa starts to eat some of the leftover lobster and she's smiling and dancing and the bear that Eric bought her is sitting on the bed and she's like, shut up and mind your business. And that's how that episode ended. So once again, yet another great episode of A Different World. Listen, it's just going to get to get better. These, like, listen, this is one of my most favorite shows. I can watch it over and over again. I think I want to do a retro review of my most favorite episode from the Cosby show. I'm thinking about it because when I say, like, I quote it all the time, like, all of my friends send me clips every time something happens and, and um, the meme of the episode shows up, they send it to me because they know that is my very favorite episode of the Cosby show. I'm thinking of doing just a one-off. Here's my favorite Cosby show episode and do a review of that, but we'll see how that goes. Well, that is my uh, retro review of Some Enchanted F Late Afternoon, uh, season three, episode two of A Different World. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And I, We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.